All right. Well, look at this place here. Big open creative world. Yeah. Whoa. Backwards. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft with your buddy, Crambo. So, as I, as I threatened in the last episode, we're going to do a, uh, uh, design episode here and I'm gonna break blocks because I don't know what I'm doing in that POV. So that's how it goes. Let's do this here Clear my inventory um, So here yeah, I was actually uh, Working with some gradients. I know gradients are now the now all the rage uh, B double O has been talking about gradients and uh, and uh, but what uh, really um I mean, people have been doing gradients with the Minecraft blocks for a long time, and I just never really kind of got into it, but I've slowly been getting into it a little bit. Um, I came across this Instagram account, and um, let's check out the Instagram account real quick. Snarple, underscore. <laughs> um, this builder is pretty epic and does a whole bunch of work with gradients. Um, as you can see right here. So I know it's stroby when I scroll, so I'll sort of jump here and there. Like, this is pretty cool. Check it out, right? So very interesting use of gradients in the in the roofs. Um, Snarple does do gradients in the walls as well. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. As an example of gr gradients in Minecraft, uh, I think Snarple is pretty epic. Um, look at that. I don't know. Oh, you probably can't see my mouse. Can you? Oh yeah, you can. Okay. Sorry. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. The base of the, the base of the tower, right? With this color smashing uh, up into white. That is, uh, that's pretty neat. Now for me, um, I mean, these gradients all look really epic and everything. I think mostly from when you are you know, kind of far away from the building. It's like the closer you get, I'm, I'm not sure how well they they work, but I think, they, I think they'll be okay. I really, really like this right here, this uh, green wall gradient. I think that's pretty, pretty epic. And then of course, we've got the oranges that go into the reds. The only issue with the gradients, of course, for roof lines is that, uh, you know, you're using solid blocks. So uh, there's, there's not very many stairs, uh, stair blocks that can be used in the gradient thing. Look at that flag even, it's kind of cool. All right, so there are various, uh, I'll check that out. There's so many, just such a weird, like the, the dark blue, right? Popping off with the, uh, the other colors here. Anyway, so yeah, I'm spending a lot of time here just going through these gradient, I don't know, that's just so cool. It's very, very neat. I'm trying not to look too closely at, at uh, Snarple's block choice because I wanna try to at least do something on my own. <laughs> I don't wanna just copy other people, but look at that, wow. That's pretty neat. I don't think I would put this like in my Minecraft world, cause, uh, or at least in Axe Harbor. Axe Harbor just doesn't have this kind of crazy feel to it, but it, it is a very nifty use of color. It's really neat. It's very, very cool. All right. Anyway, so that's sort of my inspiration. I thought, okay, I want to put together some gradient blocks and uh, at least in my own particular style, because there are certain things that, that I, it's hard for my eye to get over. Um, like there's certain, I, I mean, I built these already, but it took me I spent all day yesterday sort of putting these together. Not all day, but uh, quite a few hours. Um, or a, a couple of hours, you know, uh, just sort of figuring out. Uh, this is a big jump right here, right? The uh, the pink powdered, uh, whatever that is, concrete powder to the uh, white terracotta. That's a pretty big jump. But it does kind of work when you back up a little bit. This one works here really well um, into the marble because the marble is definitely not white. It's definitely got pink running through it, right? So I was working on something for the blacksmiths, uh, the armor, the toolsmith, the weaponsmith type stuff. And I want, I really wanted to make a water wheel. So I kind of, uh, worked a lot on this water wheel design. I didn't copy it necessarily. I've obviously seen a lot of water wheels in Minecraft. Um, but yeah, I wanted this, uh, I don't know, just through some various, whatever. I came up with this water wheel design and this is the same design moved over here. Now, I don't know how to do anything fast in uh, 
in creative mode. I still place every block. I don't know commands for copy and cloning. It's really difficult. But I thought um, we could mess with this roof line here uh, with one of these gradients. I think I wanted to try my, this was the one I wanted to try was this here. And of course in 119, we can keep the coral blocks uh, hydrated with the leaf blocks that hold water now. Uh, that's pretty cool. I did add mini HUD, so I can get rid of the, I can get rid of this thing, you know, the coordinates down on the screen below me. Um, cause if we do have mini HUD now, mini HUD is toggleable and the lighting block, this is really the reason why I was like, oh yeah, we get the light, light levels, uh, which is great. So yeah, this can be hidden with a shortcut so I could actually get rid of you know, the well, the well used uh, uh, and reliable trusty uh, vanilla tweaks one there in the middle. But anyway, um, what I wanted to do here was, oh, I am going to have to use this. See, I should duplicate this building. I don't, I just don't know how to clone. And I like, I know the commands of how to clone something and then paste it somewhere. But the problem I always run into is I never, I cannot grasp for the life of me the uh, the concept of where you place the pasting I, I just am not I don't know I'm just not oh we could always go this way anyway so I have to break and place blocks individually because that's just what I just just what I do so if I were going to do a diagonal roof here um Oh, wait, it wouldn't, wouldn't be this, right? It would be the next one up, which, oh, now we got to do the leaf blocks. So let's just put this in here and I'll replace all these. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so uh, I got the roof in there. It's, it's uh, kind of cool. Um, I think it really actually, we need to see the walls, right, uh, to really know if this is going to work. And I, I'm thinking just sort of gray, maybe a, a, a gray gradient or a darker gray. Uh, well, maybe a lighter gray, I don't know. I wasn't sure what to do with the the way these work, and there's hardly any slabs that work in, the, in this pink or purple magenta-ish sort of roof. It uh, wasn't very very much at all. I could build out another uh, uh, maca roof up on this side so we can see what it's like. So yeah, let me try this and uh, we'll see what it, what the blue green looks like on the other side, just, just to mess around. This is what I do when I design is why it takes me so long to do stuff because I have to literally lay out all the blocks, you know, put them all in there by hand. Then I'm like, okay, uh, maybe I like this or don't like that. I got to change it all by hand. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, I don't know, let me, let me throw up some blue blue on the other side of the roof. Okay, so there's the blue gradient, the blue, blue, green, whatever, sort of aqua, cyan sort of gradient. I was trying to change up the trim blocks just to see, like these over here could use like a, I don't know, the the, the contrast where here where it gets dark, uh, there isn't very much contrast when it was uh, all of this stuff. Uh, so maybe the deep slate bricks is a, is a better, look for the roof trim if we were to go with this blue one i don't really know and also all this stuff can be weathered or you know other other blocks sort of mixed in you know every now and then you can have a uh, uh, uh let me grab one of these this is like somehow that's easier than looking into the inventory <laughs> yeah um stuff like that right we could have cobbled stairs whatever every now and then but one thing i'm noticing here is the prismarine is almost too right it's like it's like too smooth the gradient's too smooth in here so what if we but boy then we'd have to go to diamonds this would be a really expensive roof let's just see what this looks like with the diamonds one two three four five i mean there's nothing we need to spend diamonds on to be perfectly frank uh once we because now that we have uh uh snow um now that we have um you know, the villagers to trade with, like we, 
like if you're not making armor or tools out of diamonds, there's literally nothing else in the game that you need diamonds for, but you know, to mine these up. But let's see what this looks like. I mean, a little smidge of white up there is almost not enough. Maybe we could just make that corner a little more snow. <laughs> Maybe that actually stands out a little more. So that's a pretty severe gradient. Now I could, I'm thinking that maybe, see, now I have to rebuild this entire roof because I'm thinking that maybe this is too much. This is too dark. I mean, it, it, it is cool and it, it does work. I mean, like I could leave it in there, but it is pretty dark. So if it just started with deep uh, prismarine, dark prismarine and ran up this way, We'd have a lot more white, uh, a lot more snow up in that corner if everything was moved moved over. In fact, it might be too much. Or I could extend, you know, I did these at five block intervals. And also, who knows how long this roof is supposed to be or whatever. This roof might need to be extended. Um, but anyway, that, that's kind of a cool roof there. I don't know. I was trying to think of what, like what the contrast of the walls would be. I don't know if gray, I guess gray would be okay, but it might be, I don't know, maybe like a wooden walls that come down from there. I don't really know. See, this is why it just takes forever. It takes forever to try these things out. So I don't know. I do like both of the roofs. It's neat to see them both with the gradients. Again, I think, uh, this right here might be too dark. Um, I don't know if there's like an, I tried to find an interim interim block that would go bridge from this guy to this one, to the coral, but I don't think, oh, maybe that, let's try that really quick. Instead of the uh, war, uh, crimson blocks, let's see if the, um, let's see how this looks. This diagonal is all broken up because of the, the whatever, the roof, uh, dormer windows or whatever these are called these other little window ledges that come out little little roof lines that extend out but actually you know what i do actually like that purple a little better than i than that high face stuff the crimson stuff i, I am questioning now i have i had blackstone in here because i mean i was building it with a different oh yeah, I was building it with a different uh, palette in mind. You know, when, when you guys saw it initially, right? The uh, I just had had a wood wood roof type thing, which is super boring now since I've been looking at all these gra gradient ro roofs and stuff. So let's just uh, see what this looks like, and maybe we could even put in a little wear and tear here, here and there, and just see. So yeah, I believe to me, to my eye, that super dark gray is better than the black. Um, it's not quite as stark. So this entire roof border should be, I think, in the deep slate. And now that we're looking at this like this. So yeah, let me throw in some walls and we'll see what, what it looks like with more of a, a gradient going up or just more gray stone walls or something, some kind of patterns and whatever. and. Okay, so, um, all right, I'm going to try to use, to learn how to use this ridiculous clone command. <laughs> so I know we type clone, and that's where we are right now. See, all right, so then we would do uh, 637 minus 26. We're so low on the Y level because this is a creative world. Um and Z is 20. I don't know. See, I have a feeling this is going to be like a block short or something. This is where I always get confused. So we go up here and we do, oh no, we want to, oh yeah, I'm facing south and, and so, I, no, south and east. Oh, it goes south and east. So we can, I think, go here, <laughs> I think. Oh, I don't want to overwrite anything. It's going to be crazy. Oh boy, how about we just go over here just in case it pays somewhere crazy. I don't really understand. I just want to be out of the way. So it's going to pace to the south and east. 
supposedly like that direction. Okay, let's do this. Clone up and then we go do do do. That's where we're at, right? I'm looking at the coordinates up in the corner of the screen and it says I'm at Y negative 53. But when I tabbed through, it said it's put in negative 52. Uh, I don't know why. Let's see what happens here. So I was facing south and east. Oh, so it did. Yeah, okay. So it was it was right. So we could do it here. I can un unclone that or I can erase that. It's not a big deal. Oh, and it pasted it exactly right. So so that's the trick. After I just complained about not understanding how the clone thing worked, it was really the direction of where I didn't understand that it was always you want to always paste or it's going to paste in from the northwest to the southeast. That's part of what I didn't uh didn't understand. Okay. Now the reason I wanted to clone it was just to keep a copy of the roof because I almost felt for a minute there, I was like, oh, I, I feel like the building is not tall enough for the roof, but I guess it's not terrible. So I extended the roof line um, on this side. I didn't do it on that side because this is, I think this is the one I want to go with. It's super colorful, but, um, and I think where I'm going to put it in Axe Harbor, I think this building is going to go near the, uh, the, the, uh, who lives in that house? Uh, the, the villager librarian with the mending book is he's living up in the third floor. And then in the basement is the butcher. Uh, so it's like the butcher's house. I think this is going to go near that house, um, over by the water, obviously, because we've got a water wheel to put in and, uh, that butcher's house already utilizes warped, warped wood. So I, I think another roof line in the same color tone is not optimal. So I think this sort of crazy pinkish one here is, I don't even know if I like this roof anymore. It's so not my, I'm just so not used to it. Like it's just not a, uh, I don't know. I'm just not used to it. So I don't know if it's, it may not, it may just not be my style. So yeah, I think, uh, so this will, I so I extended it because I, I thought it was looking too small width ways it was like the roof was too tall for how short the building was uh, going this way so i think this looks this looks much better i do almost feel like the building itself is not tall enough like it's it's almost like equal parts roof and <laughs> and wall which is a little strange but i don't know boy the more i look at this it's just such a crazy roof line uh, and even this might go back to being black stone. Let's change one back, even though I know I just, I just switched it. Anyway, see, this is what, uh, this is what, this is what designing with crying Mo is like. It's just a, a ton of rambling, but I'm not rambling about anything except what I'm doing, which is even more uneventful because I'm just not really, <laughs> uh, what about blackstone bricks? Maybe I would like those better. Let's, uh, let's do one. Oh, let's do this side real quick and blackstone bricks. It's kind of like, I, I don't want to use the same things all the time, but sometimes I, I don't know. There's certain things I like. That's kind of interesting with the light gray underneath. It's like a slight gradient built into the actual thing here. Um, I don't know if I like that roof line now. That roof line is kind of weird. I kind of want to give it a slope down. I'm not really sure how to do that. Let's see. I don't even know where the middle is anymore. That's kind of interesting. It's not... It's, I just want the slope to go up even more. Maybe it needs to come up like here. And then up here we would actually put our little loop-de-doo or whatever that is. I guess that's okay. I, I don't know. It's better than having, it's better than that over there. That's very, well, see, that was more like for this sort of, uh, sort of industrial look, but even then it's not really super industrial. I don't know. There's so much, so many things you could do with the, with the roof lines. We could do walls too, right? 
Now I'm just, I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, I'll just take these out. I'll just take them out. It's all right. There, I know there's something I could do with the walls. It could be kind of interesting. But since I slope it all the way down like that, I guess this is this is all we need. This is a little odd here. And rather than that, we have uh, there like that. So we have every two gets a little dot. Doesn't this stuff like remind you of like some kind of, there's some kind of candy, right? That's like, I don't know, there's something that comes out of the straws or whatever. All the concrete powders make me think of pixie, pixie sticks or whatever. The straws that are, I don't know, this is just like an American thing. The straws that are like colorful straws and are full of like sugar dust in different colors. I don't know. I think they're called pixie sticks or something. Pixie straws. That's what all of the concrete powders would make me think of. I don't know. I think, I feel like this, this white terracotta is just... Every time you place white terracotta in the world, uh, you know, like by itself, like here, it looks so pink. You're like, oh, that's it, it's so pink. I can't get rid of the pink. But then when I put it next to pink blocks, it just looks tan. It doesn't look as pink. And this is all getting frustrating. If we wanted a one of these guys like this. Wow, it, crimson really does not look, <laughs> does not look does not look great. No, that's kind of atrocious actually, right? Um, how about if I put some flowers in there just to see what they look like? Uh, we have, of course, more pink and, oh, we have aliens. Aliens. Yeah, I don't know. It's just terrible. It's just all I'm doing is testing your fast forwarding ability. I actually, I just, I love these doors. I really, really like these doors. They're so cool. They're probably my favorite trap doors. Now, it is a clashing color, but at least it is, I don't know, just different. I mean, it's not, it's just not red. I mean, if we try the brown ones, um, we could try something over. See, then over here, it's like a different color. So it's going to look even more different. Like they might actually work better over here in the sort of the cotton candy area of the roof, right? So could try that like that. Um, more aliens or I don't know why the blacksmith has flowers on the industrial house he lives in. Like may maybe like he and his family live in the upstairs and the downstairs is all the work area. And the upstairs is his wife or his life partner has a uh, taken over the decor, decor, decorations. His daughter has planted flowers and his son is, a, is an artist who uh, has a little painting, a little painting studio up here in the, in the roof. And uh, that's where they live. <laughs> and that there, thereby there is the, uh, the decorative roof. And he works down on the workshop that's all like sort of grungy or whatever. I, I don't know. I do want to try something else now. Uh, See, that gets nice and bright and lively and looks entirely wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, these for sure would have to go like this. Now, the white would look better over there. Like, the white wouldn't be as, as gnarly over here, I don't think. Is that what these are called? The eaves? Yeah? I don't, I don't know. I live in California. We don't really have roofs to speak of. Everything's just a flat box. Because <laughs> it doesn't rain enough or snow or anything like that, so we don't... We don't need to have anything like that. I'm going to move out of here. I, I, I think at some point I'm going to get out of here. Number one, the water is disappearing rapidly. I mean, it is. And I found it's okay. Here we go. Here's a little something to chat about <laughs> real quick. I'll actually link this video. I'll try to remember. I'll link this video in the, in the description below if you want to see something crazy. So Lake Mead is so basically there are seven states uh, this should all just be voiceover, <laughs> but anyway, we'll just, we'll just pause for a minute and chat. Crime a live stream without a, the ability to actually, you know, communicate or chat, um, which is kind of a bummer, but, but anyway, okay. Uh, so in California, there are, um, seven states, seven or nine states. I know it's seven for at least seven. There might be nine states that all get their water from the Colorado River. And these states are like Arizona, Nevada, California, um, Colorado, of course, maybe Utah. I don't, 
I don't know. But anyway, there are seven states um, and they all get water. And as I found out recently, I just didn't find it out. I just it, I was reminded of the fact that, oh, I did those stairs with two different styles. And you know what? We're, the bricks, the brick style looks better. Yeah, those are those are smooth court stairs. Okay, I'll fix that. See, see, yeah, that actually looks better than the textureless roof. I, I think. Yeah, I think it does. Anyway, all right. So the Colorado River uh, functions off of uh, you know collects water from snowmelt and stuff from uh, the Rockies. It's a big mountain range, and. Um, the uh there are a couple of different like large lakes that are actually reservoirs and lake mead is the one that's closest to los angeles yeah the hoover dam is pretty famous right and the hoover dam provides electrical power using the water from the colorado river now the the river and the lakes are drying up so fast that it's there's literally a, literally a danger in the next like five years that the Hoover Dam will no longer be able to provide electricity. Like how I said that electricity. I'm like I'm on Sesame Street or something. Lake Mead has dropped 20 feet just in the last since October. In nine months, it's dropped 20 feet. It's already at like this emergency crazy low level where. Uh, back at the beginning of the year, there are farms. Uh, I know there are a bunch of farms in east, uh, western Arizona that were literally just told, hey, you're getting 50% less water. You need to fallow half of your fields. And they just lost 50% of their water coming in. So this video I'll link to below is just this father and son. I just stumbled across it in my feed one day, and they were just cruising out to Lake, Lake Mead was on top of being like a reservoir and everything else is also like a, like a destination for boaters. You know, people take their sailboats out there, motorboats, whatever, um, and hang out for weekends or whatever. And I mean, last year, two years ago, like, like at this point right now, there's only one boat launch left that is even remotely functional. All the other boat launches, a boat launch being a, a um, a, uh, uh, you know, like, like, like this ramp, it's like a concrete ramp. It's like really long. You can drive your boat down with your, the back of your pickup, you know, your pickups towing your boat, you drive down there, you do this big U-turn, get your boat into the water. That's a boat launch. And, uh, all the other boat launches are literally, literally like, uh, they're just, you can't get to the water. The water level has dropped so low that there's no, the boat ramps don't reach the water anymore. There are entire, there, there's like a boat there. There are all these wrecks that used to be submerged under like 50 and 60 and 80 and 100 feet of water that are now on dry land. And it's only, this has all happened in like the last five years. It, it is nuts. So I don't know. I mean, I know that there's like always this all this alarmist stuff. And half the time I feel like, I mean, I catch it even myself. I'm like, yeah, I just want the water just to disappear and let's see what the chaos is going to go. Like, let, let, let's see what's going to happen. This is like, this is like craziness. It's like a, like a movie, right? But in reality, of course, everything moves really slow. And yeah, maybe people will come up with some ways to mitigate some things. But when I was informed about the power generation, that's where I started to get like, oh, this could get, this could go south real quick um, because the Hoover Dam supplies... I believe it's like 6% of the electricity to the nation, to the entire country of the United States. 6% of it comes just from the Hoover Dam. Los Angeles and Southern California gets 35% of their power comes from the Hoover Dam. If the Hoover Dam stopped functioning, like if, if uh, Southern California lost 35% of its electricity, uh, what, what in the world is going to replace that? Like, I don't, I don't understand how we function. I mean, that's like saying to every single person in Southern California, you, you're going to have, like, if you were to use your electricity as you are now, you will have no electricity for 
six hours, actually more, eight hours, uh, right? Eight times three is 24. So eight hours would be 33%. So eight hours of every day, you have no electricity, no air conditioning. I don't have air conditioning, no air conditioning, no central heating, no communications, no television, no lights, no, like for eight hours every day, like, uh, that's, that's pretty, I mean, I'm extrapolating here and everything, right? You know, of course there are, I mean, a lot of people are saying like, well, we can just turn on the, uh, you know, we'll just build another nuclear. I'm like, sure. Another nuclear plant. Yeah. That'll, we can get that built in five years. We can't even build a freeway in five years. Like there's a famous, you know, there's freeways out here that have built and been built in Los Angeles that have taken like 30 years to build 10 miles of freeway. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure whatever's, I don't know. It's really, really weird. I just feel like nobody's talking about it. I mean, a lot, a lot more people are becoming more aware of this whole issue and, uh, it is a very strange, I don't know. It's just very strange. So, and I've always wanted to live where there's trees anyway. And of course all my relatives don't even live in California anymore. And they're like, just get out of there, man. What are you doing? What's it going to take? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. The, uh, yeah, it's, it's when you don't make a lot of money, you get stuck in this weird balance of like, how do I like fund the move and then find work in a place I'm not, yeah, it's, it's all just a weird balance. Now. But the bottom line is whatever, if, if, if I decide to move one day, I'm just going to pick a place and go. I actually looked at a little small town in Arkansas of all places. <laughs> now I'm just talking. Now this is just literally just a podcast. I'm just talking and looking at this roof and I'm wondering if I should try I, I don't feel like it's going to work, but I wonder if like the quartz as the eaves would be cool, but it, I don't think it would be cool for the blacksmith anyway. Yeah. So I, I was, uh, partially because, um, I've made a lot of my decisions in life, uh, based on movies <laughs> inspired by movies. Um, when I finally made the decision to uh, join the service, it was really because, um, or what, I mean, it, this movie had a big, weird sort of influence on that decision, and it was simply the end of the movie Say Anything. So at the end of the movie Say Anything, which stars uh, John Cusack and uh, Ioni Sky, um, they fly. They literally just, she's like, I just want to go to Europe or something like that. And they just, he's like, fine, I'll just, I'll go with you to Europe. She's like, well, what are you going to do? Like, she had a job, and he's like, I, I don't know, I'll just find something to do. Or whatever. And they just the, the movie ends, I think, with them on a plane going to Europe. And I was like, I don't know. Something about that just made me, I don't know. I was like, uh, yeah, oh, you can just get on a plane and go to Europe. Like, if, I mean, yeah, you have to fund it or find a way to do it. And the way I found to do it was by joining the Army. <laughs> I was like, well, the Army will pay. The Army will uh, send me to Europe. Of course, I'll have to be in the Army, which is sort of a sort of a detail I didn't really think too long and hard about, which I probably should have. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, so that doesn't look terrible. It's kind of, it's kind of nice, but it's really got like a Barbie house feel to it. <laughs> this, this sort of white trim, right? Oh boy. I don't want to make this like, ah, it's okay. I mean, uh, Barbie houses can be cool. Okay. So that, that's just too, that's too much. That, that white around the edge is too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much. It's too Candylandish or too. It's just not the right vibe to have this stone underneath to have that white. It's a good look. It's actually a really good look. I feel um, for this roof style, and it would be pretty neat if I was doing something different with the actual building. I think so. I don't think I want to go that direction. So that's why we gotta you know lay things out here. So the yeah, next question is. Do I lighten? So a lot of, well, a lot of the wall in Axe Harbor, of course, has a lot of the cobblestone and the, and the green from the copper, but it, it's also a lot of deep slates. So mm, back to this whole thing about, look, yeah, the movie and all that. What I was getting at with that was uh, I just one day, I, I, you know, I've watched, I, uh, I mentioned that I finished uh, watching uh, Schitt's Creek and uh, just the whole little small town vibe, which obviously is completely nonsense. I've lived in a small town super small town in Texas. Uh, it was one mile square. The town was one mile square and it was 32 miles to the nearest grocery store. And so the only grocery, so the only gross quote unquote grocery store they had was like a truck stop. 
and uh, I lived there for a few months, and it was uh, it was interesting. But I didn't know anybody there, so it's not like I interacted with uh, a lot of people there. But um, one thing that was kind of interesting about that little town were the number of churches. <laughs> It was an inordinate number of churches in that small town. Yeah, anyway, there were a lot of churches, and a lot of them were empty. And a lot of them were, and this I found to be pretty cool, if I were to go live in a small that small town now, I would do this. A lot of people had purchased just the buildings that used to be churches, and they just lived in them, lived in them like houses. And I was like, that is pretty cool. Okay, I've digressed to the point that I've tied this whole narrative thing into knots. I don't know. So, yeah, I was watching Shit's Creek in a small town, whatever. So, one day I was just sitting here, and I've, you know, I don't do much when I'm not working. You know, I've got plenty of time to do Minecraft and paint miniatures and been getting into a little tiny bit of 3D sculpting on my iPad, um, whatever. Um, so I just Googled, you know, sm artsy small town or something or small town with trees or something just to see what came up in like real estate sites. And there's this little small town that I'm going to forget the name of that's in Arkansas. And uh, I could rent an entire two bedroom house like a full house uh, for less, for th uh, three quarters what I pay for rent here in this one bedroom apartment. Uh, but you know, it's in Arkansas. <laughs> oh man. But boy, the terrain looks super cool. Although, you know, the, the pictures are all from springtime or summer where it's probably warm and humid and who knows what the winter's like. But uh, I'd like to live somewhere where there's trees and greenery because, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. All right. Test test. Here we go. Back. Uh, this is a new day, <laughs> a new new IRL day for me. So I've done some work because this has taken a while. That's that's the whole thing. Working on this thing takes a while. So I got some walls in there and a little bit of decor. So I kind of like this look. I feel like it's going to blend pretty nicely with the uh, the river wall on Axe Harbor. So um, now I worked on what might be considered one entrance. Uh, this building will have two entrances. Entrances, so I'm not totally. There's probably too many trap doors. It's it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I I messed around with this so so long, and I have to keep messing with it. That's just part of the process. Um, but I kind of like this upper level. Looks, I think, okay. All right. So yeah. I mean, basically, design work like this is or what I envisioned this episode would be like actually would just be a stream. It would just be several hours of trying different things out. And even now I'm still experimenting anyway. So it's kind of cool. It's working, I guess. It's a little, uh, I don't know, I'm still experimenting with uh, using blocks and, you know, the alternating blocks and panes thing. Um, but anyway, this front door sort of matches the other, the other front door, uh, right here, the two front doors, I don't know, the side door or the front door. Anyway, so there's two entrances and whatever, and there's not enough room to put like the, uh, all those uh, oak trap doors. Um, anyway, so it has a very church-like feel to it. Um, <laughs> didn't really intend that, but I didn't really think this through. So anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot of leaves overgrown as always, you know, but I'll probably vary some of these leaves with, you know, jungle leaves and azalea leaves and, and sort of vary that when I do it, actually, when I build it in the actual uh, Let's Play world. Um, yeah, this side looked really, I put first a broad window, like a full window, but it, it was maybe a little too much. So, but up here, and as you can see, we've got some interiors in there and the interiors have really taken me, everything's taken me a long time. So, yeah. All right. So this is uh, just... In case you haven't used Lightmatic or whatever and you've been curious about it, maybe you're... I just want to make sure I've chosen the actual block there. Okay, so I've chosen that block, and then we need to put another block. So now if I do a click here, there we go. All right, so is everything inside of it? Let's make sure I've got the stairs inside of it, all that stuff, right? Um, it's got... Yeah, it's got everything full clearance. Got everything selected. Okay, that's cool. Area editor. Okay, here we go. So, gonna call this. What do we call this? This is the uh, armorers, <laughs> the rural jurors' house. <laughs> Armor house. Uh, oh, one. This is always so. Set that. So now save schematic. 
and we call it Armor House. And uh, save it. Cool. Load schematics, material list. So we can click on that and then we get our material list and then we can export this. Uh, we can write to file. We can ignore grass blocks and we can ignore smooth stone. That's just part of the world. Write to file and now it's created a file and I go and I always go in and I'll forget to do it now because I'm recording, but I, I always go back and, and jump into the, I go jump into the file folders on my Mac and then I immediately rename that file to Armor's house or whatever the house is, the structure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out and uh, I don't know. I hope you guys have a good couple of weeks and uh, we'll see you when I see you. See ya.